It's a beautiful day out here, and uh, looks like the woodpeckers are out this morning. I guess, you know, it's all about the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees, but whatever the case may be, we're going to make some splits. Nine of clubs. There's another one. And another one. And another one. And another one. So on and so forth. Uh, bees actually recognize patterns, and there's actually a paper out there that's says they can recognize numbers or the amount of quantity of, of shapes of things so let's see here today these are going to be splits that's one two three that one's done so four that'll be five six seven eight so we're going to do eight of them and uh let's get started since these are going to be one frame splits, I may not have a ton of open brood. Um, you know, I may not have much open brood at all. So you have to make a convincing argument for that virgin queen and whatever her retinue or the, the amount of bees that are in there. And make a convincing argument for them to stick around. So what you see there, that little plastic thing, is synthetic queen mandibular pheromone. And... Um, Here's a bee right here that was nasonoving on it. Nasonoving is when their their abdomens, as you can see, those little lines on their abdomens, they'll actually tuck the very last part down, and there's a little gland that they'll they'll start flapping their wings to uh, signal that um, there's a queen there, or the colony's there. Okay, um, so queen mandibular pheromone. This is synthetic uh, queen mandibular pheromone. Somebody has the patent on this um, this type of application this, this release of the, the pheromone and it's I believe it's 9 oxodenoic acid I believe is is what they use here um, so I just wanted to bring that up too uh, I will be using I'll be hanging those um, inside of the colonies as well so that pheromone um, hive beetle prevention, okay, and the virgin queens. So, okay, this colony has a mated queen in it, but it's it's a mess. Um, and the reason why I say it's a mess is because these are all medium frames and medium boxes, but I have a couple deep frames in here. Uh, and what happens is a deep frame, okay, this is a medium frame, obviously, teeny tiny thing, deep frame is, is longer, but when you, not by that much, and when you stack two medium boxes together, if you stick a deep frame in one of the spaces, there's this, all this room for the bees to have empty space, and, you know, as Lorenzo Langstroth, the good reverend, discovered, uh, you know, if it's, if the space is greater than three eighths of an inch, bees will will build comb. If it's less than three eighths of an inch, 
they'll put propolis in there and seal it up, glue it up, and you know, if it's three-eighths of an inch, they'll just do nothing to it. That's what the reason why we're able to have all these movable combs, right? Because um, Lorenzo Langstroth, you know, many, many years ago, discovered that by his observations. Now, uh, unfortunately, it can make a mess. So just be prepared to see some of that as I go through here. So, okay, this is obviously, I don't know if any of this is getting picked up, but this is um, got nectar on it. It's not capped, so it's still very liquid-like and they have to dry it out. Um, if you pull honey too early, or this isn't honey, it's nectar, if you pull, pull this, and before it's capped, it'll have too high of a water content and it'll ferment. It'll turn into, it'll turn into alcohol and then into vinegar and it won't taste very good. So, the, the time to harvest is when the, um, the cells are capped. You know, when the bees put a lid on it, so to speak, it's it's good to go. It's good to go. It's the moisture content is, is typically below 17 percent, and uh, sorry, this these leaves are incredibly moist. I mean, they're practically soaked. We've been getting so much rain. Okay, there we go. My smoker just keeps on kind of dying back, and I want to make sure I don't lose it. Give these guys just a little. Okay, so we're moving right along here. This might be one of the big frames. Nope, it's not. Okay, so um, this frame actually has brood on it, so. You can see the cell size is smaller. The cappings are perforated instead of, you know, when they cap off honey, it's actually sealed. It's it's uh, water, well, I wouldn't say waterproof, but it's, there. there's no air that, uh, you can't, you can't be below a, uh, <laughs> a, a wax capping and breathe and, and survive. Um, and these are, are brood cappings. They're, they're, uh, semi-permeable they're they're kind of like kind of like paper in a way but you know uh, bees don't they, they don't uh, use paper at all uh, unlike um, other members of Hemneropta like the uh, the wasps and whatnot they, they actually do looking for the queen on this frame I do not see her so this goes in I'm gonna hit fast forward here in a second because I'm gonna end up going through all these frames and I think it'll be boring. But uh, carefully pull these these frames. I always pull the frame. Um, I don't go right for the middle frame because I'm okay. Cut out all the wild comb. Uh, I've got it set up now. This thing's gonna run as all mediums. I have the maiden and land queen in in a nuke box, and we're gonna go ahead and pull off one of these virgins. It's really getting hard to, to record this and do all this stuff at the same time. Um, I don't have a tripod, and these things are actually starting to overheat my my phones and stuff. I don't know if that queen will show up there, but I'm gonna go ahead and take my pocket knife and pop that off. I had to crack open this big box. Things should go a lot faster. Um, just had to fix a lot of things in, in this colony before I can split them up.
all three of these supers, uh, two deep supers, and this medium, all all look like that. Okay, now that I've got all three of the honey supers off, what you'll see is me remove a metal grate looking type of, uh, there it is. That is a queen excluder, and sometimes they're made out of various materials like plastic or, or even wood with metal in the middle. And just as I said earlier, three eighths of an inch um, is B space. Well, there's also space in which the queen uh, cannot travel through but worker bees can travel through and that's worker bee space so the size of the queen's thorax prevents her from from traveling through the frames ideally um, there are some rare cases where the uh, queens are smaller uh, in size if they're virgins in in rare cases uh, their genetics lend to a smaller thorax and, and they can pass through but having that that metal frame uh, queen excluder in place prevents the queen from traveling up into the top boxes and laying eggs so um, everything up on the top is just filled with honey and honey only and not honey here and then a, a few areas of bee brood etc so now I'm in the brood chambers and I've just selected a frame uh, to drop into these uh, what you see these uh, cardboard uh, nuclear nucleus boxes um, and I'm selecting frames that have if possible open brood on them as I go through I'm looking to make sure this is so important I'm looking to make sure I pick a frame that does not have the queen on it if you take the queen out and place her in a nucleus colony and then throw a virgin in there um, it's a recipe for disaster especially if you want to keep that queen that's already mated and laying so I'm making sure about those two things I'm also looking for any signs of disease or a virus as I look through the brood frames looking for something completely different than what I would look for in the honey supers Now I'll continue this process to load each one of these nucleus colonies. Here I believe what I what I found was a, a queen cup. And if you find a queen cup, you also want to check and make sure that there's no larvae in it or eggs laid inside of it or royal jelly because that is also um, a pending recipe for for, for disaster, possibly, or um, for a change in the dynamics of the um, colonies that you're trying to build up. Okay, and what you see there is just the top bar of a queen uh, starter strip, queen cell starter strip, in which I have the NICOT grafted uh, virgins inside of roller cages they are all hatched so there is a virgin queen that I'm just putting on top of that nucleus colony keeping her inside of her um, uh, uh, queen queen cage I want to prevent the uh, the bees from uh, the foreign colony uh, from uh, being upset with her I'll repeat this process as I go through uh, this eight frame Langstroth box. So there's only eight frames in there versus 10. Easier to, to lift and manipulate um, since those deep frame boxes that you see that I pulled off, each one of them, when they're full of honey, they, they can weigh up to 80 pounds, which those, those do um, because they're loaded with honey. And in this this eight frame configuration I am splitting it into eight colonies if this was a ten frame 
configuration which I also run I would split it into 10 new colonies so I'm, I'm actually doing that um, in another yard with with hives simultaneously as I do this here in this yard Also, what I'm doing is I'm evaluating the laying pattern of the queen that uh, is in this colony. She was mated just a few months prior uh, during the beginning of our main flow around uh, March, middle of March and uh, 2017. So I'm also evaluating her laying pattern to get an idea of uh, what type of material she has uh, and as I said here in the video, I, I mark my queens and I mark them not using the international standard of color marking, which um, lends itself to marking queens with a certain color to indicate the year that they were, they were born and bred. I mark queens uh, with different colors based upon what my records are designed to re record uh, and evaluate for breeding material potential so the data that I I collect has everything to do from uh, strength flying strength of, of the queen of her progeny how far they seem to forage how early they will forage um, how frugal they are their hygienic instincts their defensive instincts against um, uh, you know pests such as even you know robbing pests like wasps uh, or other colonies of Italian bees honeybees apis mellifera um, to their properties in uh, attacking or defending against parasites like the hive beetle And of course, the number one parasite of all parasites, the Varroa mite um, or Varroa destructor. And um, it is responsible for many, many of the problems that beekeepers face with dealing with colonies that die out. Uh, the Varroa mite is something that is about the size of a, a pancake uh, if I was to compare it to uh, a human size life-size model of a honeybee it's about the size of a pancake and it it has um, it's like a tick that it latches on to the hairs of the honeybee and feeds off the hemolymph of the bee which is uh which is the blood of a bee and the and bees just haven't really adapted to defend against them because they are a parasite that they haven't lived with for a long time the apis mellifera western honeybee is just recently uh, been exposed to this parasite versus other species of uh, honeybee like apis serrana they've coexisted with this parasite for for hundreds of years um, our honeybees are, are being decimated, destroyed by this parasite. They track in all kinds of diseases and viruses. They're a vector for viruses like uh, deformed wing virus, Israeli acute virus, uh, all of these things that, that kill off colonies. So I select for, for queens that have varroa sensitive or varroa specific hygiene. Um, it's it's a it's a time-consuming trait to select for so I also started with Queens that were selected for this by the USDA and by um, apiaries that just specifically specifically test for uh, and sell Queens that 
are produced in controlled matings like artificial inseminated matings to be specific for these traits. Uh, Adam at VP Queens uh, is a source for some of my, my queens uh, and I have from my mentor, uh, he has not treated his bees ever and um, they're a local strain of, of honeybee. They're very hygienic uh, and I have stock from him as well as the mite biter stock from Purdue University uh, and Jeff Bertha. So uh, I've, I've got those traits as well to fight against the, num the number one parasite, number one enemy of the honeybee right now, which is the uh, Varroa destructor mites. Now there are other things that I will also test for uh, using liquid nitrogen in field assays to see just overall hygienic behavior removal of sick brood. Um, and uh, there, are, there are other things that I'm in the process of, of experimenting to determine whether or not they'll be viable things to test for and select for, such as resistance to um, pesticides, um, you know. So there are all those things. And if you put just one little dab of a certain color on the queen's back and you're limited to the color, for, like for this year, 2017, it's yellow, a yellow dot of uh, Testor's model paint on her back you're you know you do that with every single queen you have it doesn't really give you a good way to 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 mark which one's which um, you know I, I do have the card system on the colonies but on the queens when I select rear queens I actually use a series of colors on their thorax so I'll use anywhere from two combination two different dots to three just depending on what the queen's behavior is like. Okay. It's a bad introduction there. I'm gonna fast forward through some of this material since a lot of it is repetitive and get closer to um, the end of this uh, particular video segment. Mainly, you you can see that it's it's really hot outside. It's it's um, it's over 90 degrees, and I'm wearing a, a jacket. And my, this particular colony is is in the sun for you know straight direct sun for at least 80 percent of the day. It's hot. It's hot. It's heavy. It's it's hard work. Um, you have to you have to actively manage your colonies and. Um, you know, if you have over a hundred colonies and you're doing it all by yourself, you know, it becomes a little, you have to, what you end up, end, what you end up doing is you end up taking some shortcuts. In other words, you won't spend as much time, uh, really paying attention to the finite, you know, and, and fine particular details of what's going on in each colony to your detriment, really. But that's what happens when you start to, start to grow as an apiary, um, you you just don't have the amount of time to do what a hobbyist can do so different management strategies you know but all all the ones that that do the best even if you're going organic or as treatment free as possible still require in many cases even more hands-on management even more uh integrated pest management techniques
don't know if you can see this is where this is a medium frame that was put into a deep and they have definitely on the bottom here drawn out drones see for varroa control you can just clip that off and throw it in the garbage or put it in the freezer uh, but uh, for what it's worth I'm trying to get a lot of drones because I want to have I want to have immense drone congregation areas I'm sure I'm gonna have to deal with some other stuff here in just a little bit um, but uh, there's the queen and this queen once again there she is I, I don't know if you can see this but I always look for the thorax I mark my queens and I have a have a system that I use to um, to mark my queens, and it's it's for breeding purposes. So, okay, here we go. Got her in the clip, and now I'm going to move a lot faster. So, still want to be careful, but. One of the ways to tell you got a really nice virgin is how many bees already start to cluster around her. This is a, uh, a roller cage. Prevents her from coming out and killing the rest of the virgins. You, you can see they, they respect her a lot. She's already, she, she's strong with her pheromones and she hasn't even been mated yet, so. That is a virgin. This is a queen from that colony. It's mated. And here's the bank. I'm going to take her and put her in a completely different yard. So I'm just going to keep her in the clip. If the hive has not been queenless for a few hours, you know. It, you, you can run into issues releasing a virgin. Okay, so we're gonna let this colony just kind of kind of sit on it, you know. Don't leave that queen in in her uh, in the cage there. We'll give it a day. Come back. 